Hi everyone, it's Mary Jo. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you everyone who's been subscribing and welcome new subscribers. If you haven't, you might want to so you'll get noticed when my readings uh, are up and my videos are up. I uh, don't get your email so I won't solicit you. And thank you to everyone who's been booking readings with me and even going on my Enchantress Tarot Facebook page. Um, I'm trying to post things about your readings uh, that you love them. Thank you so much. I'm grateful to Spirit for help and giving you help, guidance, and peace. Uh, this is our new moon reading in Taurus for April 26, 2017. Taurus is our earth sign. It is the first earth sign in uh, the house of the zodiac in astrology. It is symbol of the bull. So a lot of us have been feeling a very heavy feeling in our bodies, very like um, weighted down, slow moving. Oh, there goes Ash again. I do apologize. Here he goes again. Um, but it is that heaviness. And a lot of people who are fire signs as well as air signs do feel that weight on them when the moon is in Taurus or even when the sun shifts into Taurus. And right now, Pluto, one of the heavier outer planets, as well as Saturn, are retrograde. Jupiter is also retrograde. Mercury is retrograde, but that's high speed and fast. But So for a lot of us, we've been feeling a lot of heaviness and weight to our bodies. Um, going to doctors, finding out there's nothing wrong with us. Everything is okay, but yet we don't feel like ourselves. This is a transit that is affecting a lot of people. It depends on where it is in your chart. I've been feeling like, like I have cement shoes. I feel like I, I, my get up and go didn't even got up and went. It's just going nowhere. It's just stuck on non-movement and I feel heavy. My body feels heavy. My head is groggy. So if any of you can resonate with that, Understand, please, that, uh, yes, it's always great to check with your doctor to make sure you're well, okay, especially since Taurus is the earth and it is the physical body. It's ruled by Venus. But you do want to also consider that you need more rest right now during the retrogrades, especially with Pluto um, retrograde. And um, it is retrograde for five months. But your energy will be passing as Mars goes into Gemini. Uh, you'll get your energy back and feel like that ignited spark again. All right. But remember, with the new moon, you want to give your in, um, put your intentions out in an earth uh, element. So you have stones and crystals around you. Be outside. Put your feet in the dirt or in the sand. Write them down and plant them in a flower pot if you're in an apartment or condominium and don't have anywhere outside. Nurture it and water it and watch it grow. Okay. And um, do always give thanks for everything that you have achieved. Your emotions may be at odds right now because, you know, we do have... Um, that energy, very conflicting. We have the Saturn is at the galactic center right now. So you have a lot of releasing to do, but yet you want things in your life. So you want to do some healing. Let the downloads come in on the new moon for new things in your life, but also let the healing begin for you too. All right. And like I said, Venus does rules Taurus. And the first card that we got here in our new moon reading is the lover's card. Now the lover's is number six. It is a major arcana. All right, number six is the number of Venus. It's that nurturing, that loving, that home, that womb feeling. It is the physical body. And the lovers is Gemini. Gemini is retrograde. Venus is direct. So for some of you, this is talking about a love finally coming into the, your life. Many of us haven't had um, a relationship. I've been single for over 13 years. I'm divorced. I raised four children. I don't even date, you know, and now all my children are grown and they're out of the house except they're leaving me their cats and dogs. But, you know, it would be nice to have a beautiful, healthy, loving relationship with other. So, <clears throat> excuse me, for many of us, this is about that thing that we feel is missing in our life. Not that we need it to fulfill us because loving self first will bring us the best of other, but it is about that one missing piece of the puzzle. Like we feel like we got it all together. We're content, we're happy. Um, we have family, friends, loved ones. We have healthy, loving relationships with self, with spirit, with others. But we're missing that other part, that lover energy that we share ourselves with. So for many of you, this is a welcoming in of a lover energy. The other that you share yourself with. And if others of you say, oh, here, this, nope, then I'm going to flip off this reading. Well, it doesn't have to be about a lover if you do have someone in your life already and the relationship is going great, or you don't need anyone and you want anyone in your life and you're doing great on your own. This is about self-love. This is about something that's missing within you that you haven't achieved yet. Because with Venus, okay, 
And Taurus is the second house. It is about your self-esteem. It is about your self-love. It is about your self-worth. Yes, it's possessions and material things that you take through life with you. What can you have and accumulate? But most importantly and firstly, it is about loving yourself the way no one else can love you. It is about that confidence, and I don't mean being arrogant or indignant or egotistical. It is about a balance, because the number six is balance, a balanced love of self, where you embrace your light and your dark. That is very new moon. Remember, I tell you to face and embrace even the things about yourself that you don't like and you wish you could change. And I don't mean your fat thighs or your, your small eyes or your, your scraggly hair. I'm not talking about that because that is all just physical stuff um, that you can change and alter. But it doesn't, it doesn't touch the light inside, the inside of you, that inner beauty, that love of self, okay, that you really want to embrace and resonate outward so that you can see and face in everything about yourself. If you have a bad temper, you know, if you're stubborn, if you're not giving um, or not warm and fuzzy and loving, you know, and you'd like to be, whatever the things that you are about yourself that you don't like in the new moon, you want to face and embrace them as part of you to bring that balance within self. Because once you love yourself as a whole person, you know, especially in this physical, uh, you attract everything to you. And it doesn't have to be if you don't want to love in your life. It could be anything that's other that you feel you would like in your life. This is about choices. So starting with the choice of loving yourself first. Now, again, if that doesn't resonate with you, in the lover's card, it is about making choices, good choices about things that you need and feel attached to in your life that you desire. So there's a plethora of, of uh, a list that we could go on forever. Whatever is in your list of the things that you desire and wish for in your life that you feel is like a missing piece to the puzzle in your life, that you have all these other nice things, a house, a car, a home, a boat, it, even if it's not that you don't have those things, gee, I wish I had the money for a new treadmill, or I wish I had this. Don't worry about the money or how it's going to get to you, but this is about the thing coming to you because you put your heart's desire into it, and it will manifest. You don't always have to have money to get things in your life. People can give you things. You can find things. Um, there's so many other ways. Just let the universe take care of the house. You just ask them for it. So whatever this is, just make the best choice. And especially, you know, you're watched over and blessed by Angel Gabriel here. And Angel Gabriel does control the throat chakra, the speech. All right. And since Gemini is ruled by Mercury, and that is our thoughts in this mind and the way we communicate, see, it all ties in. Be very careful. Make good choices in the way you communicate, where you speak and think about yourself. Because the way you speak and think about yourself is what the universe is going to reverberate back to you. All right, so on this new moon, face and embrace the darkness about yourself and the light about yourself. Love yourself wholly from the depths of your soul. Say, I love you. Imagine yourself as a small child, the child that maybe got beaten or hit or made fun of or bullied, even the one that was loved and adored and cared for, and you miss that. Imagine yourself as the adult going back to that small you, that child you, and give yourself a hug for the time that you were feeling you needed one or lost it alone or unhappy or sad, or even that you missed the way you were loved and hugged and kissed and told how wonderful you were. Go back to that place, especially with this galactic center right there in Saturn's retrograde. It is about the past, that Lord of Karma, that you want to heal these things. So that's a lot going around with this card because it's a major, it's one of the major secrets, the big secrets in life. This is something Spirit is saying to you right now you need to work on. And it's way larger than um, you think right now because this portal is open for you to heal the past and embrace what you have now in loving, knowing that what the future is bringing will be balanced for you. It comes and goes. It cycles. But right now, jump on this new moon. Meditate when you can, especially with this galactic center open and this portal energy coming. Now we have another major arcana. We have temperance. We know it's a time of healing. We were just talking about that with this portal open. You want to heal all past wounds, that Lord of Karma. You know, and with Saturn and Sagittarius uh, in retrograde, you know, you want to definitely look at the higher mind instead of the lower vibration of this earth, the muddiness, the fears, the anger, the hostility, the oppression. That's all fear-based. You want to raise your thoughts for love. If you don't feel ready to forgive others, 
um, for what they've done to you, you're holding yourself back from having everything. Remember, it's like throwing a hot coal at that person. You're only burning yourself. You want to make sure that you have a period of healing. The temperance is also a card of balance, just like number six is the card of balance. All right, temperance is talking about um, moderating things in your life. So if you're excessively thinking negatively, if you're excessively drinking, sex, drugs, whatever it is, do things in moderation. I'm not judging. But this is about a cleansing and a healing for you with temperance. It is of the physical world and the spiritual world. And like I said, with all the energies going on right now, with Pluto's retrograde, it's transformation. It's change. It's that alchemical process, life, death, and rebirth, releasing things. Saturn is old paradigms, old beliefs and dogmas. You want to heal those and let those go the way you were treated in the past and even now. Mercury is retrograde. You're going within in the way you're thinking. You want to change your thought processes, letting go of hatred, uh, agony, um, turmoil, stress, strife, any of the torture you've been through in your life, past lives and now, you want to heal these and work through them. This is your soul offering up this ego of this physical body for a healing right now. It's a beautiful time to do this, to embrace that healing. The wellspring is there to offer you a cleansing and a purging right now for you to stay grounded and emotionally purging all the things that are painful for you. Like I said, any post-traumatic stress, and it doesn't just mean to the military. You could have been beaten as a child or in a, in a relationship with someone you loved, a husband or wife, um, mistreated, anything that was stressful and trauma you don't realize, and you're walking around as a result of that trauma and still living in it and being triggered. This card is saying to heal that. This is everything in moderation, not to extremes. This is about balance. Little by little, release and let go. Write a letter to the universe, to that person, that thing, whatever it was that caused you pain and suffering. And forgive them. Even forgive yourself if you feel that you were part of welcoming it in. And let it go. Burn it, tear it up, set it free in the water, Plant it in the ground. Let it become something beautiful. Okay? But it is about you healing at this time. And that's another major. Now how, this is a beautiful reading. And then we get the Ace of Wands. Okay? Because the Ace of Wands to me is always when God intervenes. See, the hand comes from nowhere. We have also the Ace of Cups in the weekly reading that I have up now too. This is like from the unseen. See, the hand comes in from the unseen and it brings you new life. For some of you, this is about actually having conceived a new life. It could be and a male child, usually with this card. Um, but it is also about new ideas, new passion, new drive, inspiration, divination. Look at all this beautiful orange and yellow energy here. So we do have empowerment. That's very second chakra is um, third, uh, excuse me, yellow for the, the empowerment of the third chakra. The second chakra is your creativity. And that would be like Scorpio rules that energy and Pluto. So it is about a creative all spark for you, something new beginning. Um, now, this card also is indicative of summer for me here in the Northern Hemisphere and winter for the, uh, for the Southern Hemisphere. So in the Northern Hemisphere, this could be even starting in the summer solstice for you, the 19th, 20th, the 21st of June, but before the autumnal equinox, all right, in September 19, 2021. And in the Southern Hemisphere, it would be the opposite for you, okay? So this could even be that it's going out that far because my readings can go out on a short term, about three months. So for many of you, it could be even that's when it's going to really hit for you, that you have renewed energy, renewed spark, renewed ideas, your business is taking off, the success is going through, whatever choices you made and the healing you're doing, now you're seeing the results of that. But there is intervention. This card is saying that in the unseen, you're getting help right now. Let me see if I get anything else with this card. See, the purple mountains kind of look like to me that spirit is definitely there, but it's also your psychic energy going on here. You're starting to tune in, and, and, and you know with the Pluto, that is very much about the psyche, the soul work, and you want to tap into the mysteries in your life. Ace is a new beginning. So this is going to be coming for uh, many of you. If it's not happening already now, this is going to be in the June by the summer solstice. You see this new life, new beginning, new spark. And if it is this relationship, if it is this um, new piece of music or new job or career that you've really wanted and you're doing the healing work and finding yourself balanced, this is definitely having the renewed energy to uh, 
take the staff, the wand, and walk with it. This is God saying, go with it. You've got life springing eternal here. And then I did pull an oracle card from the Nature's Whispers oracle card. It's a beautiful deck. I love the imagery from Josephine Wall on here. And it's number 43, Love Matters. Now, look, I know a lot of you don't want to hear it about love. Um, and there are a lot of you who really want to hear it about love. So, either way, since we are talking about Taurus, and Venus rules Taurus, and Venus is the goddess of love, and it is about self-value, self-worth, and possessions, let's talk about that, okay? So this card is about the matters of love in your life, loving yourself first. Um, even if it's someone else that you've not been having a great relationship with, and you can go to the reading that I did for the week, and we had the Tower card there. It is about a release of ego and arrogance. This is like offering out um, your hand of peace to someone for a period, okay? And maybe that's what matters to you right now, that you need this peace in your life. Uh, let's see what the cards say for number 43. So four and three is a seven, so it's a mystical number, but it's also about you taking a stand in control here. It says the way for you to handle things is important. There will always be many challenges and life lessons, and that is part of the experience, okay? We go through ups and downs. I tell you that all the time. Choose to learn from your encounters. Get your heart ready to receive and allow for the various emotions you may be feeling. Consider what makes you happy. It is time for you to allow yourself a day of enjoyment. Love who you are. And be willing to give and receive love unconditionally. That's very Venetian, Venusian, okay? This is about starting with self-love. The goddess of love. Venus loved herself first, okay, and loved others. This is what she wants you to do. Embrace and love yourself, okay? Also, reach out a helping hand to other people, okay? Love yourself. Take care of yourself. And be gentle with yourself, I tell you, on the new moons. It's not a time to cut your hair. Your body's in a critical phase. Be gentle and you know what, too, the slowing down is starting for me, too. It's a few days before. And with this Pluto retrograde and all these heavy outer planets, a lot of us are feeling a weighted heaviness to our bodies. Do not do any weekend warrior stuff. Do not do anything stupid, crazy, new, and different, adventurous, okay, unless you've already been doing it. Be very cautious with your body at this time. Be gentle with it. Get extra rest. Drink lots of fluids, and I don't mean alcohol. Moderation, okay? Drink the water. You don't like water? Put some lemon in it or lime. Skip the alcohol just for a little bit or at least moderate yourself, limit yourself to four ounces, okay? Because you definitely want to let your body take in the downloads and do the healing that it needs during this new moon phase, especially in Taurus, which is the physical body, okay? So I wish you a beautiful new moon. I'm going to post the intentions in the memo, all right? And as always, I wish you the best.